The Small Business Show, episode 355 for Wednesday, November 24th, 2021. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to, or welcome back, to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small businessing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include the David versus Goliath podcast dedicated to helping those of us who are small businessing and Coinbase, where you can get 10 bucks in free Bitcoin at coinbase.com slash SBS. We'll talk more about both of those shortly here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm really good. Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. You know, rock and roll on here. It's, it's, yeah. it's things are crazy but it's q4 right so yeah, yeah, business yeah. is as usual is crazy business which is great like this is when we make a lot of our money i don't want to say all of our money because that's not true but sure you know far more than any other quarter and uh and then i've got you know these other things going on including still prepping a, a business for sale as i mentioned and you know going Exciting. through that whole process yeah it's been yeah. fascinating it's it's moving a little more slowly than I would want, but, but it, it's, it, we're in the process of prepping things. You know, it, last week we talked to Todd Salkovitz about uh, accounting and he said, most businesses don't need to worry about accruals based accounting. And that is true. Most small businesses, uh, this business that we are selling, we have never booked as accruals. It's always been cash based because it's simpler and easier and, you know, yep. you follow the money and it's much, you know, we're, we're, we're smaller than a, I think what the IRS sets the the number, if you're doing, if your gross is 25 million or above, you have to be on accruals base unless you've got some grandfathering or something. I don't know, but we are not there. So there's no concern with that. Uh, <laughs> so it's fine, but for prepping it for sale, we found that we really might want to show uh, some of the numbers as an accruals based uh, scenario. And so going back, even just over when you're selling a business, there's a term that I had never heard before, Shannon, it's TTM trailing 12 months and people, oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Makes a lot of sense. As soon as you know what it is, right. People want to see the last three years of financials, and then a month by month accounting for the trailing 12 months. And it makes perfect sense. That's a great way to look at a business. Yeah, absolutely. But doing accruals based, even just for TTM, uh, we are through it now, but it took a lot more effort. And it's, you'd think that it would be easy to be accurate with it. But as we were going through and kind of trying to figure out how to restate and, and find all that stuff, it's. You would think accruals base and cash base would just be perfect matches for each other, but they are not. And, yeah, right. and it's, and, and there's reasons why it's not like a mystery or anything, but, and, and no one was surprised except us, you know, the M&A firm we're working sure. with was like, yeah, yeah, we get it. You know, it's, it's not going to be right. And we're like, yeah, right. Why is that? They're like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's just how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, that that whole concept and uh, having sold you know companies before uh, it, the when they start talking about okay we'll come and help you you need to restate your earnings yes and I and I, I can remember the first time I heard it, I was like well no no we we want to give accurate you know <laughs> everything that you go, no 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 we no. need to dig through and see what is you know related to this and what are lifestyle things you know that need to come out and how did you state this and the timing and all that kind of stuff because. You know, as small business owners, we're always looking at the calendar and, hey, let's spend a bunch of money right here before the end of the year to lower our tax liability or whatever. Sure. And uh, having someone that can help you through that process is, is really important. It, it's Definitely. interesting. I, I learned two, uh, well, the the difference between two different things. There's there's EBITDA, right? The earnings before yep. interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And that's generally what you're looking for. That's Another way of saying profits, it's, it's a very specific way of saying okay. profits, which is yeah. which is what you want to do. But essentially what's happening to price a business is you look at your profits and then you multiply those by whatever the multiple is that you can argue makes sense for your business. And of course, the yes. buyer is going to want to lower the multiple. But the, 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 the multiple becomes the negotiable number, whereas the, the EBITDA, the, the, your, your profits, I, and I want to zoom out, actually, I don't want to say EBITDA. I want to say your profits. That's sort of, you state that, and then they w presumably come in and 
and you know do due diligence and confirm that what you're telling them is actually true, uh, and and so it's good not to to lie about it. But when selling a small, and so even it makes a lot of sense for large companies, publicly traded companies, certainly, but but even you know privately held larger companies, that's a that's right. a good way to look at it. For a small business where you've just got you know one partner or a few partners, it it the thing that becomes the way you calculate profits is not EBITDA. It's what's called SDE sellers, discretionary earnings. Ah, and yeah. this way you're actually taking your own salary out as a profit. You're restating your salary as a profit yeah. or whatever you're, you know, again, your earnings, it's your discretionary earnings. Now you may have to, if you are an integral part of the business and by right. selling it, you're leaving well, then you might have to do an add back of, okay, well, you know, we need to hire somebody. For, you got to replace yourself. You got to right? replace yeah. yourself, but yeah. you probably replace yourself with someone that's much less expensive than you. If the business is profitable, right? You know, you're, you're pulling money out in different ways. Like you said, the lifestyle stuff, all of that stuff, you add it all back in. It's just, and that part of it, I knew the lifestyle stuff, but I never thought about, oh, well, the things that you're paying yourself that like yeah. that from dollar one, that's considered a profit. Now, what do you need now that you're not here? And to be quite honest, it's got me looking at my other businesses too. Not that I am intending to sell them, but looking at, okay, wait a minute. What if I took myself out of this business? What yeah. would it cost me to replace me? It's a good exercise. It's a great exercise. Yeah. yeah. What you don't want to do is find out you can't replace yourself for what you're paying yourself. Correct. <laughs> yeah, if that well, but but if, but you do no, I've, like I've you want to know that if that's true, right? Yes, like, and yes. when you're starting your business, that's for sure oh, yeah, going to be true. Absolutely, right? Yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it, but looking that sort of you know in the eye and saying, okay, I still need to grow this before I could make it worthwhile to someone else. That's a it's a right. fascinating. It's that especially in a business where you are working in the business because you have to be, and there's nothing wrong with that. This exercise is a great it way really to, good to look at working on the business and to to frame that, you know, and just say, yeah. oh, it's, so it's been really, I, I knew that it, whether or not this process is successful and, and success is, is, I mean, so let's define success as we actually find a buyer and sell the business. Although there are other ways of being successful, but, you know, even if it's not quote unquote successful in terms of selling the business. I know I knew that I was going to learn things. I've already oh, yeah. learned things like it's already been if it ended here, I'm already way more informed and way more skilled at running a business than I was two months ago when this process started. It's just been fascinating. Yeah, yeah. It is true. You know, and, and one of the I, I read this years ago, you know, is that you try to always run your business like you're going to sell it mm -hmm. tomor tomorrow in general, you know, it, and, and prepping it. Uh it, it, you know, the same analogy, you know, uh, keep your house clean. Like it's going to, you know, you're having a bunch of people over that day. Yes. Right? And so it's, yeah. it, it, it keeps you, Oh, got to update this, make sure the books are up to date, make sure you're not leaving things to kind of come around and nip you in the butt later. Uh, it, it, it is a great bit of advice. Hard to put into, uh, you know, make reality, but yes, you know, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I say it cavalierly here like it's oh, it's no big deal. And really, that's the problem. It isn't a big deal, but it the answers might be long term problems to solve or long term yeah, things right. to address. I don't want to say they're problems, but they are things to address. It comes yeah. it comes down to, you know, I, I just have talking about it is really easy. Yes. But as a small business owner over so many times, I'd be, I would hear this kind of advice and be like, are you kidding me, man? I am hustling from, you know, the minute I walk in the door till I leave at night and I don't have time. And it, that is, is a, is a whole nother, you know, uh, situation to address, uh, getting yourself out from under the weight of working in your business and, yes. uh, being able to work on it more. And, and if, and if you haven't read the e-myth, uh, that is just the, in my opinion, the Bible of, uh, small business ownership. And, uh, Michael Gerber has written that. We'll link it in the show notes. It, it'll help you get out from under that pressure. So you can make these kinds of decisions. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a mindset. That well, that's really all it is, on. is right. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I was forced into this mindset because we made the decision to sell this other yeah. business. And it was obvious to us that this business was in a position where, 
we could sell. There was, you know, some, a little bit of extra profits on the table. And it was like, wait, this, the, you know, we've been growing quickly. It's a relatively new business. Like th this makes sense. And so it wasn't scary to start asking these questions about this business. And, yeah. and, but right. it is scary to ask these questions about the other businesses that you've had for decades, yeah, exactly that we've had for decades. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I don't yeah. really want to peel no, back I that know. onion. I, it's no, not, don't, don't look under the carpet. Cause that's where I've been. Yeah. The dust. I've been sweeping things under there for <laughs> yeah, decades. Absolutely. Do not pick up that rug. And, and it's yeah. like, no, you it's know hard. what? Let's pick it up. Let's take a look. Let's be honest with what's under there. And I, and like I said, I, that's a really helpful thing. Again, Easy, easy to talk about. Super difficult to actually do. But because I'm in this mindset with one business, it's almost impossible. It is impossible for me not to be in that mindset with another. And so yeah. it's, it's a good thing, though. Yeah, it is. And, and if you're hearing these words, you know, and you have a relatively new business, it, this is your opportunity to keep from, you know, brushing those things under the rug and, and building up things over time is to try to focus on how do I keep it as clean as possible? Yeah. And up to date in case someone called me tomorrow and said, look, we, we've been looking at your, you know, the industry you're in, we'd like to buy your company because yes. I've had that happen and I had to scramble to, you know, get things in order. And, and when you have a, uh, let's just say a fish on the line that, you know, you're trying to hook or whatever, you, you got to work and quickly to keep the deal. Deals have a, their own uh, kind of lifespan. Time so, kills all deals. Yeah. TKAD. So it, it's on my monitor down in the like office. It. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're not ready to share, you know, documentation, paperwork, you know, get an NDA in place. And, it, and of course that assuming that you, that you want to sell the business or right. you'd like to at least, at least hear the offer. Yeah. It can slow things down a lot and you can lose your buyer. You know, certainly. absolutely. Yeah. No, you got to move quickly. I've, I've, I mean, you and I you know, have told that story many times about deals on the web, but I've, I've had that story happen with other businesses over the years where it's like somebody comes in and you know, they're like, we want to buy it. It's like, Oh crap. We're not what? Yeah. Okay. Cause like when, when, when uh, Alan Meckler showed up to, to, to buy deals yeah. on the web, which didn't happen, we were actually at a position in that business where it made sense to sell it. Like it, we had, we had gotten that to pretty much the right point to sell it. it not exactly, but no, we were, yeah. we were out of it enough that we could see a path of detaching from yes. it. Right. Yes. You know, and, uh, and, and that's not going to always be the case with your businesses. So yeah, it, it's yeah. Anyway, it's interesting. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Hey, I want to, you know, with, with, uh, tomorrow, at least release day, day after the release day tomorrow, being uh, Thanksgiving, I, I, I want to take a, a minute like we do each year and talk about the things for which you and I are thankful. Uh, Great idea. But uh, not but. And the the next thing that I would like to do, though, is to uh, share a little bit about both of our sponsors, if that works for you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, do you identify as crypto curious? <laughs> if you've ever thought about entering the world of crypto but felt a little overwhelmed, good news. Our sponsor, Coinbase, makes learning to buy and sell simple. Coinbase offers a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell, and even spend cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. I've been using crypto, uh, well, I've been using cryptocurrency for quite a while, and I've been using Coinbase for for my cryptocurrency for quite a while. And they make it easy. Like it, it truly is super simple. You've got to go check it out because they offer things like portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and a mobile app that actually works really well. So you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. Like I said, you got to go check it out. And good news, we've got a way for you to do just that. Because for a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at our special URL, coinbase.com slash SBS. Sign up at coinbase.com slash SBS for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Coinbase for sponsoring sponsoring this episode. Listen, you know, almost every small business faces competition from much, much larger companies in their industries. And in order to compete against them and win, small business owners and entrepreneurs need to arm themselves. We need to arm ourselves with all the right tools and resources. And that's why we are loving this 
podcast called David versus Goliath. In each episode, host Adam DeGrade covers the five smooth stones that every business needs to slay the Goliath in your industry. One of the best new podcasts for the people like us who are small businessing every day. David versus Goliath podcast is dedicated to helping us small business owners leverage technology to compete and win against our large competitors. And it's so clear that Adam has this passion for like inspiring and educating and even activating small business owners with episodes covering emergency industry trends, top strategies and digital marketing, constructive management techniques, and more. This show is packed with everything you need to succeed in guest interviews, sales role playing, even actionable tips that you can apply directly to your business today. This is the stuff we love. So if you're a small business owner or entrepreneur, the David versus Goliath podcast is a must listen. Search for David versus Goliath podcast on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go check it out. You're going to love it. And our thanks to the David versus Goliath podcast for sponsoring this episode. All right, man, let's, uh, let's start our, uh, let's talk about what we're thankful for here. You want to, uh, you want to kick us off, Shannon? Well, sure. I tell you what, I'm thankful for those sponsors, uh, because even though we, you know, we don't do this show to make money, we, we do this show to spread the, uh, joy of small business and we love doing it, but it is a great, a, it's still something you measure how you're doing and, Absolutely. uh, what, what type of sponsor, you know, will come on and, and, uh, you know, sponsor the show and, and, and who you know, renews um, like that, that tells renews, us a lot. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a good way to, uh, to measure. So, uh, but one of the things on my list, um, is, and, and it sounds kind of weird, but you know, it's taken me a long, long decades to get to this point, but I am very thankful that I don't have an alarm clock anymore. Oh, I still wake up early. Of course, I'm just, you know, you want to get stuff done, but there is yeah. no reason most days, some days I have meetings or sure, calls or just kind of thing. But in general, I can say that, okay, well, I, you know, I, I could get up and get myself going because my time has been returned to me after 25, 30 years of, you know, uh, having commitments and having to be somewhere, getting things open, getting, making sure I, I always wanted to be there, you know, uh, if not before the other employees at the same time as other employees that, that were coming in. And I would often, you know, most times stay later than they did, but not having to do that anymore. Uh, I miss working with those folks, but uh, I don't miss the alarm clock. I, I, yeah, that's interesting. I haven't relied upon a daily alarm clock for quite some time. Uh, and I realized that the Monday after daylight saving time changed most recently, uh, yeah. <laughs> For whatever reason, now you remember, you know, if it is, if it was eight o'clock, that's really what nine o'clock would have been, a, you know, a few days prior prior. I woke up at 9 a.m. on that Monday morning. That's late for me in a normal yeah. world. Like normally yeah, right. I'm, I'm awake by 8, 15, 8, 30. That's, that's me. You know, I'm a night owl. Yeah. I'm up till You're about one or two. Dude. What's that? <laughs> You're a musician. I'm a musician. I'm a musician <laughs> yeah. and a computer nerd. This night owl yeah. thing is, I, I yeah. had no choice in the matter. Right. Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but, um, I woke up at 9 AM and I'm like, wow. And I, like, I was hard fast asleep. And then, you know, and then I woke up. And I thought, man, this is 10 a.m. Like, what am I doing sleep? I, you know, I haven't slept this late in a long time, but it was like, you know what? It's fine. Your, like there's your body needed it. My yeah. body needed it. It was fine. I went, you know, and then I obviously, you know, got up and, and did my thing and came to the, to the office and started doing my thing and it, it was fine. But yeah, setting things up so that I didn't need that alarm clock anymore. That that was a yeah, goal a long time ago yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, we always had buildings and people and employees yes. I had to go to, and that's a little different. Um, I, I suppose you could also say, you know, one of the people I followed for a long time is this guy. Uh, he calls himself Mr. Money Mustache. Okay. And, yep. and he promotes this concept of, you know, this fire. What is it? Uh, I, I forget what the acronym stands for, but it's basically... Okay you know, saving a bunch of your money uh, so you could retire early. I know the RE, retire early. Okay. Uh, and his concept or his thing that he used to celebrate is Monday didn't make any difference to him. And uh, he, although he worked all the time on his own stuff, and I get that, you know, Monday is just another day for me. Right. Uh, you just roll into it. Okay, what projects I'm working on? What, yeah. what you know, have going on? So it'd be a similar, similar kind of thing. I guess a little more 
flexibility. You know, we're not that, free yet as no. small business owners, but hopefully you've built some flexibility into your life. Yeah, that's the, and that, I think that's a good litmus test for that flexibility is can you, you, you know, do, do you have yeah. to set an alarm every day? Like you said, there's some days where yeah, you have yeah, a meeting yeah. or whatever. It's fine. Yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with yeah. that, you know, or a plane to catch or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Financial yeah, independence, good. retire early. That's the fire that's it. concept. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. It's a good, I don't really, uh, we could do a whole show about that. Maybe we should. I, I don't agree with the retire early thing. Um, I think that, and by following the people, I think that's a misnomer. It, yeah. They're not really retired. It's more that you're doing things that generate more uh, revenue directly to your bottom line, which allows you the freedom of calling yourself, quote, retired. Yeah, I, I, right? I, I you know, uh, well, we mentioned it in the beginning of the episode. I'm talking about selling one of the businesses. It doesn't mean that we're selling the others, <laughs> right? So yeah, I will yeah. still very much have have responsibilities. And I like that because I know that if I were to not have anything to do, I would go from making money to spending money because I'm not going to just sit around and let the time tick. I'm going to do something with my time and it's either going to be yes. things that are earning me money work. or yeah, costing me money. Right. Well, that's true. It's, you got to be careful. It's yeah. one or the other. So, yeah. I, you know what I, I probably would, if I had nothing left to do, I'd probably start something else. Uh, you know, it, eventually sure. something would sure happen, would. but I would yeah. be very concerned about, okay, you know, like, but now I'm going to, my, my rate of spending is going to increase if I don't have something to, to work on that, that earns money. It's like, I know how this goes. I know how I am. So well, yeah. and you know how to do it. And it's like, yeah. you know, I, I think that's a, it's a good thing. And, and it, I don't want to take the next uh, thankfulness thing, but it kind of leads into this. If Go I'm ahead, take it. very thankful for new challenges mm. because it keeps things fresh. Yeah. Uh, you don't get complacent. Um, it, it's very good for your brain to be continuing to solve problems. I've neuroplasticity, life- man. Yeah. I'm into it. You got it. Yep. Yeah. I had neuroplasticity on my list of, nice. of things. Yeah. It's, well, it's, because it's important. Like if you, it is. if you aren't, especially as we age, which appears to be something we can't seem to avoid, uh, Keeping the mind limber, as you, as it were, yes. uh, is is super important. And new challenges are the way to do that. Yeah, they are, and, and it can come in any form. I'm I'm doing uh, a bunch of volunteering with the local organization that I have that uh, nice. that I've got involved in, and you know they are just you know the structure and lack of systems in this organization is just mind blowing. And so it's a massive challenge for me to go in and number one, build enough credibility to where they will listen to you. Yeah. Uh, instead of being just some new outsider that doesn't know how, the, you know, how things work. You don't know how this but, isn't how we yeah. do things. It's like, yeah, that's yes. why I'm here, man. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I'm trying to overcome those things with yeah. this group. And so it's definitely, uh, it's added some stress to my life because I can't, instantly solve the problem because nobody works for me. It's not right? your thing. I, right. I can't be like, no, no, this is just a way or, or we've had these ideas. So now we're going to implement. It doesn't work that way. Um, so I think that, uh, those challenges, they just keep you coming up and keep you processing. Like you say that, uh, whatever plasticity, neuroplasticity, fancy term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just yeah. one of those things. I, I, you know, I, I'm sure as we all do, I, I have a few friends who are very set in their ways and it's like, this is how I do things. And if I present something new to them, it it is rejected summarily, not out of hand. Yeah. yeah it's, there's no evaluation. There's no experimentation. And certainly I try things uh, that, that I do not, that don't stick. Let, let's put it that way, of you course. know, and then I go back to yeah. whatever I was doing before, but yeah. like embracing change is the way to keep the mind limber. And I, I think it's really, I, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, the, the, the first thing that I had on my list though, uh, are you, our listeners and like, I really, and I don't say that to pander or anything. I like, I really appreciate if we didn't have you, we wouldn't have sponsors, right? I mean, we, 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 maybe we could convince a couple of sponsors to come on board, but then they would, they would fail and you, you know, they wouldn't have any success and they wouldn't come back. And most of the sponsors that we get are through ad agencies are in our partnerships with those. I, I also value greatly, but those ad agencies are essentially one buyer for lots of different brands. 
And so if one brand fails on a show, that agency isn't going to risk their reputation bringing on lots of other brands for that show. Right. So, you know, so all of these, like the, the sponsors that we have today are two relatively new. One is Coinbase is brand new for this episode. And yeah. David versus Goliath, I think this is the second episode that we've had, or maybe the third. But but they are relatively new sponsors, but from agencies that we have worked with for years. And it's you. Without you, we don't have those sponsors. But without you, even without the sponsors, I, Shannon and I would not continue to do this show the way that we do it. We would talk and we would communicate, but it wouldn't be once a week. It would be yeah. once a month. And, and quite frankly, you all facilitate this conversation that I get to have with my friend and longtime business partner, Shannon. Yeah, and thank, and right. I'm really thankful for that. Um, I do have a thought, though, as, as I was reading through the sponsor spot, the David Goliath one, uh, they said, you know, and you heard me say it. Find the show on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I found that really interesting because those are two places I do not use to listen to most podcasts. Yeah, me included, yeah. But clearly, that like that copy was written very specifically and very intentionally. Yeah. And so it, clearly for David versus Goliath, that is either the audience that they have that they want to expand and they know works for them or are places that they have no audience and they want to expand there. So I'm curious. I have a question. I always have a question. Feedback at businessshow.co. Where do you listen to this show? I know everybody out there knows the answer to this question. It's super easy because you're listening to the show. So just tell us, where do you listen? Is it in Spotify? Is it on YouTube? Because we are in both of those places. Is it on Apple Podcasts? Is it somewhere else? Do you just listen on our website? Just let us know. Feedback at businessshow.co. Let us know where you listen. And I, I, would, I would be ever so thankful for your answers. So I'm just yeah, curious. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. One of, the, one of the things on my list that is... Uh, I call the luxury of good equipment oh. being able to buy what you need to do your job, yeah. not having to scramble. I've spent a lot of my time over the years, like, okay, make and do. I mean, it was a time I was running companies where somebody would come in and say, Hey, I just sold your laptop. <laughs> we need a data transfer and sure. get you into something else because I got to ship that out today. Or we need that screen from that, this device and all the kind of stuff. And just being able to, uh, you know, have the luxury of having the right size, big curved monitor on my desk and the right Mac laptop that I want when I, you know, uh, j just having that. I think it's great and makes your life better. It makes you more productive. And um, I'm thankful for it. I, I agree. I Yeah. No, I I. I also experience the luxury of good equipment. I You know, it's it, it's not an accident. I've been. I, I organized some, I started some businesses that were very much focused on, on that, right? Like Mac yeah. Observer and Mac Geekab are focused on my love for a, you know, Apple equipment and that has yeah, served absolutely. me well. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 That's really um, good, but. I mentioned it in, in the last, uh, when I was talking about being thankful for you, our listeners, I'm thankful for all my business partners and that includes you, Shannon, and it includes yeah. everybody else that I'm a partner with. I, I found that I do very well with business partners, with the right partners. You've, if, if you've listened for a number of years, you've heard me tell stories of the wrong business partners that I've been with, which is probably what gives me the, uh, the, the, the framework from which to know that I'm thankful for the right ones. But it really, I, finding people that can either drive you in a way that you wouldn't drive yourself or, and, or, complete those tasks or take care of the things that you don't like to do, or you aren't yeah. good at like that. Those partnerships can be wonderful. And it, I encourage people to seek them out. Even if you've had bad experiences in the past, you know, we're, none of us are oh, good yeah. at everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, no. yeah. That, that is for sure. And I think that, um, the sooner you can recognize what your weaknesses are. Yes. And then try to surround yourself either as employees or as partners, uh, of some sort. Uh, and, and that may be even, you know, doing an entirely, uh, entire joint venture with another company. So totally. they're better at, at certain things. I mean, like we, we had Todd Salkovitz from account edge on, and he was talking about, they were bought by priority software because primarily they wanted a small business application because they didn't have one, you know, and they didn't have a solution for their customers. So they went out and acquired a, a product because they're trying to offset one of their weaknesses. You know, um, I, th I think that's, that's really true. 
or something. I agree. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I, I'm very think I've thought about it more and more. I'm very thankful for the pessimists in my life. Ooh. And what I mean by that is I'm an, you know, just an eternal optimist. I'm always looking for the, the bright side. One of my catchphrases I always, you know, when I'm, you know, celebrating is, you know, our best years are always good, always ahead of us, which I truly believe that because I'm the author of my own story. And why would you think otherwise if, if you have the choice? And I think we have the choice, but the pessimists are really good for kind of sometimes calling out the BS of that. And, you know, making you uh, fine tune those, those concepts of you know, how good things are going. And um, it's another weakness. You can be blinded by optimism. And I've been that way before. And it's cost me a lot of money uh, at times. So having some pessimists around. Um, no, you need you the know, pessimists. I, I have to yeah. play the role of pessimist in some of the partnerships that I have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you know, and I don't. I, I don't think of it as the pessimist, though, in the moment, though, it, it objectively, I, I certainly would agree that that is the role. Uh, but in the moment, it's more the realist. Like you've got the, you know, the the optimist. If somebody's more optimistic than me, that actually worries me because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. Like, uh, I line. don't think You're so. Right. <laughs> right. And You're so, right. Yeah. I, you know, I, I see my barometer as I need to argue that this point and if somebody can convince me it's not it's not like i'm entrenched but it's like no this is i like i don't think that we're gonna like that's that's a little bit pipe dreamy man and and yeah, you know thing to recognize and and it yeah. like draw the line and now let's discuss it and and you know sometimes it's like oh no okay i see that all right great you know fine maybe i didn't have the information or i didn't see the vision i am i'm not the visionary in any of the businesses i have rarely am I the one that comes up with the idea for the business. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I'm, I'm the execution guy. Well, you're a get it done guy. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But that's Very what, important. that's what also makes me a pessimist. It's like, well, wait, whoa, 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 what do you mean? You think we can do that? Like, I don't <laughs> think we can do that. And I'm the one do, of the doing the doing. So let's have this conversation. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, good stuff. I, I, I am thankful for the vaccines. Um, we spent a year plus, being, you know, locked down. And, and if we look at what has, I know things aren't perfect out there, but especially in the, you know, performing arts portion of my life, which is another portion of my business life. Uh, but it's also just a, a portion that I'd love to do. You know, that part was shut down basically without any other options for, uh, for a year. And, and it really was the introduction of the vaccines that allowed that to open up whether, you know, but, well, I'll leave it at that. It, it really like without that, I think we'd, we'd have had to find another way. And I don't know that we would have as quickly yeah. as we did. So I am super, super thankful for the vaccines, uh, for yeah. reopening business because without it, and I know there's people out there that, that agree with the vaccines and don't agree uh, with them, but without yeah. them, like none of the concerts with, that any of us saw this summer would have yeah. happened were it not for the availability of vaccines, whether people attending took them or not is sort of irrelevant, uh, but it is also relevant. Uh, you know, yeah. the, 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 if you attended a concert, you took advantage of the vaccines. If you play yeah. me as a performing artist, I, it, being able to perform for people, I took advantage of the vaccines. I am vaccinated, but you yeah, know, like sure. it, whether or not you are vaccinated, that's what's been happening, right? That the, that's the reason for all of this. So I'm super thankful for it. Yeah, I'm thankful. I'm yeah. thankful for it as well. I'm also thankful uh, on the flip side for uh, the freedom of choice that we have in our society. So that's another argument, whether, you know, you want to talk about mandates and different things. Sure. But I do believe I'm I'm for vaccines. I'm not for mandates, but I think that, um, you know, you and I are on the same page. So much of things would not have happened had we not uh, had it. I no wish way. they would have called it something else. Because I think there would have been less argument about it. Yeah. And well, I think, it was right. We we are humans. Yeah. We, we we love are. to be divided. It, it truly yeah. like it's ridiculous. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Yeah. But it, it is just a fact of being human that yes. we seem to love to argue and, and take our, yeah. our 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 sides and all of that crap. 
And yeah, so do. obviously it happened with this too. Of course it did. Y you know, the, yeah. the, and, and I think poor persuasion from the, you know, yes. entities in charge of how it was presented, but I also cut them a break that like, well, we, we're kind of in this pandemic. We don't really know. Uh, and, no, we and, didn't know. It was our first know, pandemic. Yeah. I mean, really, yeah, so you know, I mean, I know there's one. other ones, but this yeah, is the first yeah. one that really hit hard, but yeah, I'm, I'm super Great. thankful for the vaccines because I like, we would not be as open as we, the reason we are yes. as open as we are now is the vaccines, whether there would have would been agree. another reason I can't say yeah. there's no control group, but, Correct. um, but yeah, I am very thankful for them. Yeah. And, and the fact that they're keeping a lot of people safe, it's great. It's, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's great. Yeah. From that aspect, I, I agree. Yeah. It's good stuff, man. We have, we all have a lot to be thankful for Yeah, and certainly our best years are ahead of us. Definitely our best years are ahead of us. Oh, by like if we've proved nothing over the last 40, you know, 24 yes. months, like that's definitely the case. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so stuff. much for listening, folks. Send us a note. Feedback at businessshow.co. Let us know what you're thankful for. Let us know. Uh, let us know what we're wrong about. We love to hear yeah. about that. Absolutely. That's right. You got anything else, man, or is it time to wrap? No, that's it. If you're celebrating Thanksgiving, which I hope you are, have a great day with family and friends. And uh, maybe you're having a Friendsgiving. Those are cool, too. Those are cool, Whatever. too. Like, I remember yeah. doing those, as a, like, yeah. you know, before we had kids and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, kind of in those in-between years. Who knows? Maybe those great. will happen again for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. absolutely. Check out our sponsors, folks, coinbase.com slash SBS. And, of course, search for that David versus Goliath podcast we mentioned. Keep living that charmed life, will you? See you next week. Thanks.